Royal Yacht Britannia brings Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh back into home waters. Ships of the Mediterranean fleet which escorted the yacht from Gibraltar now give way to 17 men of war of the home fleet whose guns thunder a salute. Message to the home fleet, Her Majesty describes their meeting as a wonderful moment. As the yacht comes abreast of the destroyers and frigates, their crews give three cheers, and the Queen, Prince Philip and their children acknowledge the greeting. The battleship Vanguard, flagship of the home fleet, is astern of Britannia as she nears Portsmouth. Here, the crew of the new carrier Centaur wait to hail the Queen. Throughout the night, the escort ships keep constant vigil, guarding the Queen as she comes ever nearer her capital. London, the day of the royal homecoming. A chill dawn, but from first light, the city has made ready to greet Her Majesty. The waiting hours are patiently borne by crowds lining the royal route. Britannia, a brave and stirring sight, moves up the Thames. Quickly, the massive bascules of Tower Bridge are swung upwards as the yacht comes near. Standing with the royal family is Sir Winston Churchill, Her Majesty's First Minister, who boarded the yacht in the Solent the day before. Now Londoners see again for the first time in nearly six months the Queen whose charm captivated all who saw her in the most distant lands of her Commonwealth. Britannia passes through Tower Bridge, gateway to the capital, and this moment above all means that the Queen has come home. The Queen Mother and Princess Margaret, aboard the launch Nor, move away across river to meet their family again. First to greet the Queen Mother is the Duke of Edinburgh. At Westminster, having left the royal yacht while the Queen takes lunch, Sir Winston Churchill arrives. He now wears a top hat in place of his yachting cap. With members of the royal family, leading London citizens and representatives of the armed forces, he will welcome the Queen officially when she steps ashore. The royal barge bearing the Queen comes upriver and turns towards the pier. Now follows the climax of Her Majesty's return. The royal journey that took her and Prince Philip 50,000 miles around the world ends under the shadow of Big Ben as Her Majesty sets foot on English soil again. The Princess Royal, the Duchess of Gloucester and the Duchess of Kent greet the royal couple. forward to inspect the Guard of Honour mounted by the 3rd Battalion, the Grenadier Guards. finished the inspection and before she rides through the streets of London to her palace, she stops for a few words with her mother and sister. The royal couple with their children begin the last stage of their journey home. Away 
from Westminster and up into Trafalgar Square moves the Landor, and the thousands who have waited on the pavements for many hours acclaim the Queen as her procession enters the Mall, the Royal Mile that leads to Buckingham Palace. And so the Queen enters the gates of her palace once more, watched by members of her family who had journeyed by another route. Almost at once the crowd bursts through the police cordon and rushes to the railings shouting for the Queen. And there she is. the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret onto the balcony. Now the royal family, a complete family once more, are with the people of their homeland again. And yet, in the course of her triumphant tour, Her Majesty has shown how fully and rightfully she was at home, even in the most distant lands of the Commonwealth. In the Queen, her consort and her children, we see the living symbol of the Commonwealth Her Majesty has visited. A family united, constant and unswerving in its duty. <laughs> 